Here are the tools that I use every day as a no-code web developer. Having a system in place for your freelance career or web agency is extremely important. Our line of work isn't just about the experiences we give our clients, but about the experiences we give ourselves and how we improve our workflows. The tools we use can give our clients a better experience. And there are many tools that make your life so much easier on the back end, so I've compiled a list of all of those and I want to share them in this video. If that sounds like something important to you, make sure you drop a like on this video. I make videos about my experiences as a 24-year-old no-code web designer and developer. I also talk about entrepreneurialism, creativity, and tech, and if you like the sound of that, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Now onto the list. So I put timestamps all throughout this video for every tool that I have listed, so if you already have one of these or you know a lot about one, just skip to the next one. Today I'll be showcasing some of my web stack that I use every day as a no-code web developer. Some of those tools include Webflow, ActiveCampaign, Jasper, Typeform, Sketch, and Markup.io. So let's jump right into it. First up on the list, we have Webflow. I bet you didn't see this one coming. If you're a web developer, you've probably heard of it, and I'll be making a ton of videos about it. And I'm not going to waste too much time here. Check out my tier list where I review Webflow a little bit further than I will be doing in this video. But anyways, Webflow is amazing. And honestly, I'm still learning it. So if you don't know, Webflow is a website builder that gives us the most amount of freedom than any other web builder on the market. It really is the closest thing to freedom that us no-code web developers get. So just to show you how limitless Webflow is, let's take a look at this site that is literally a game. So if I go in and start clicking around, you'll see that I could click on anything and it plays like a real Nintendo game or something like that. Guess what? This was actually built in Webflow. If you don't believe me, we'll keep playing for a second, then I'm gonna show you a quick other demo as well. So what's cool is I'm using my keyboard actually right now to play this game. I have no idea, no earthly clue how this was made in Webflow, but it was if you look at the credits for it. Um, this site is called babyrace.ch. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna play anymore, but just to show you how limitless Webflow is, here's a prime example. So now I'm gonna go on to another one. Uh, this one is called hellohecko.com. Let's look this up. That's, that's Loom. This is, oh, this is another site, by the way, that's built in Webflow, which is really sick. While we're here, I'll just show this to you. This is, it says hustly.net up here, but that's not what that is. It's Tal Graphic Designer. And this is just really cool. It shows how limitless of a possibility you could get with Webflow in general. Let's take a look at Hello Hecko. Oh, and by the way, here's another, but <laughs> see, I'm going to keep getting distracted. Let's look up hellohecko.com and see what we got. All right, this is Hecko. See how gorgeous this site is? And this is all just built in Webflow. Look at these animations. This is what you could do. I mean, it, again, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Webflow is the, one of the only tools that allows you this creative freedom without having need for really any code. Now, I'm sure um, the Baby Race game, I'm sure there was some code in there to be able to do that. But mind you, the, everything was really built in Webflow. It was made there. Um, maybe it needed a little code. Probably not. I don't know. So... Now I just want to show you what the back end of Webflow looks like. This is this is by the way this is currently the site that I'm trying to build um, for Synergy for Webflow. I'm in the process of it. I actually used a template for this. This is I think it's called the Kaka template for any Italian people. You know Kaka has a different meaning, <laughs> but. Um, so you could see with this template that I'm building, you could have light mode, dark mode. You could have a menu here that really well animated. You could do things like contact, blah, blah, blah. Everything is just well animated, very well, well built. So now I'm going to show you the back end. So if we go out of the view mode, you could see, let's look at this page. On the side, you have a tab, which is your designing tab. And then on the left hand side, you have your tabs for your navigator, you have your tabs for adding symbols, um, you have your tabs for adding extra elements, you have your CMS tabs as well, so we have projects, post categories, and blogs, and then of course Loom is in the way, so I can't show you what's underneath, but um, there's some extra things underneath like settings and things like that. So let's 
take a look at what it looks like when you click in something. So let's click in here. And you can see on the right hand side, there's a selector, which is where you could title your elements. There's spacing, display and layout, um, sizing, positioning, typography. The point, the point I'm getting at is it really looks like your typical web designer. It looks like something like Sketch, Figma, or anything else. And what is really cool is you could go in, edit for tablet. Right, you could edit for landscape phone, which obviously I need to fix because this does not look right on landscape phone, or of course, regular phone, which this obviously doesn't look right on regular phone. So I could go in and make those adjustments accordingly. Um, but what's great is when you edit in a mode, like when you're editing in this mode and uh, phone mode in particular, you just edit for there, it doesn't affect the rest of the site. So like I said in the beginning, uh, Webflow, it allows you the most creative freedom, but that's because it really it really acts like something like CSS and HTML, just the visualized version of it. Like it's like if you're a visual learner instead of um, someone who could just memorize something, you know what I mean? So anyway, now that we've taken a brief look at the editor and we're going to be doing tons of deep dives in the future into Webflow. But now that you've seen this, let's go back to the project settings, because this is where a lot of your other stuff is going to be. So you have your general settings, like your name, subdomain folders, where you could set your favicon, um, web clip, um, set your time zone, where your location is, if the site's password protected, um, Webflow branding and stuff like that. That's if you aren't on hosting uh, and things like that. So then there's activity, but we also have the hosting. This is, and I'm, I'm, I can't remember if I put it before we got to the demo or it's going to be after, but I'm going to talk about the pricing. But here you could see the basic pricing. E commerce starts at $29 per month and goes all the way up to $212 per month. But like I said, I would not recommend the e commerce package. I would just stick to your website packages. You got the basics. CMS, business and enterprise. So if you want blogs, real estate listings, things like that, you have to go with the CMS template. Um, then the basic just gives you a, a normal showcase website with no blogs, things like that. But that's sometimes that's fine for most people. Business just gives you some extra stuff. It looks like it gives you um, global CDN uh, and some more bandwidth and things like that. But I'm going to talk about that after the demo. So don't really worry about this. Um, then you have the editor, which is basically the front end version that like when you're designing on something like WordPress, uh, usually you give your client limited access to the back end. The editor basically allows your client to have some sort of login to do things they need to do. Like if it is a listing site, they could go in and edit real estate listings on this editor, things like that. You can make some other quick changes like text and things like that. But really this editor, uh, I could show you briefly. Let's open a link in new tab and show you what that looks like. So down here, um, you get everything. You get your pages, orders, e-commerce collections, blog posts. So like I could go in here, start a new blog post and work that way if I wanted. But again, this is, this is really where your front end, front end, Front end, back end is probably the best way I could put it. This is where that lives for your client. Um, billing, which is really, really cool. If you are a team or an agency with the billing, you could bill your clients for hosting like you normally would, and you can mark it up. So every month they pay for Webflow hosting, you can make some money on it. I think that's fantastic. It's a really great thing for agencies and something that no other place really does. I mean, there's affiliate sites and things like that, but whatever. SEO, a lot of your SEO lives here, but a lot of it also lives in the editor um, that I was showing you in the beginning. Um, each page can be edited accordingly in there, um, but you can put your Google site verification, your global canonical tags, um, site maps, indexing, things like that. Um, there's some really cool form settings here as well. Uh, like recaption, things like that. You could add custom fonts, which is really cool. By default, you could add Google, you could add Adobe, you could add really anything you want in here. It's truly fascinating how they've built that in. Backups, of course, you could back up the site. Integrations, this is where 
you could really feed all of your integrations from Facebook pixels to maps, APIs, webhooks, things like that. And then, of course, there's a custom code page. So if you do know some code, you could put that in here. Um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for Webflow. This is such a vast tool and there are so many benefits to using it. You could learn Webf Webflow through their university here. Uh, let's see what else. You could see a showcase of all really cool sites. You could also clone some of these to add assets into your site. Like say you see a carousel that you really like in here. You could copy it from one of these cloned sites out of this showcase that you find and add it to your website and just change it around a little bit, which is really great. There's also some resources like pricing, templates, community, eBooks, forum, blog, support. Templates is also just like, um, just like the showcase, there's a ton of templates to choose from that really make your life easier. As a matter of fact, soon I'm going to be doing a, uh, it's like, construction site working on it very soon with the contract and in here i'm going to find a template that we could build out on figma or sketch and we could work in here find that design and i just basically create the template and we're good to go makes my life easier makes them enjoy the product more because these are gorgeous so yeah that's all I really have for this, and now on to another clip of me. <laughs> what I love the most about this website builder is it allows me the most creative freedom than any other platform. Most of the sites that I previously built were done with WordPress using Elementor and CrocoBlock. At the time, I truly thought that was the most freeing approach, but then I discovered Webflow and everything just got flipped on its head. As far as pricing is concerned, Webflow starts free with two unhosted sites, but honestly, I don't think that's a good deal. Realistically, it starts at $19 per month if you pay annually with the core package, or it starts at $28 per month if you go month to month. This is the current package I have, but I do plan to upgrade to the growth package when the time is right. That package is $49 per month if billed annually, or $60 per month if you decide to pay month to month. Now, Webflow does also have high-speed hosting, which is separate from the prices listed above. To start with an unhosted site, it's free, but your domain will have the extension Webflow io at the end of it i wouldn't recommend having a site with dot webflow dot io at the end of it that just is not good for business basic hosting is 12 dollars per month if billed annually and it comes with a custom domain and 50 gigabytes of bandwidth if you have a blog or other cms items like real estate listing that's going to be 16 dollars a month billed annually now this option comes with 2000 cms items 200 gigabytes of bandwidth and three guest editors on the site there's also other more expensive options such as the e-commerce options, but honestly, I, I would not recommend them. I really don't think Webflow is the best tool on the market for e-commerce. It's not as secure as others like Shopify or even WooCommerce. So I think for most sites, especially those sites that are more of showcases or listing sites like a real estate site, Webflow is more than capable with the $16 per month hosting suite. As I mentioned, I'm going to be covering Webflow and WordPress extensively, so look out for future videos all about that. If you want to to check out Webflow right now, I do have a sign up link for it in the description. Signing up with that link will help support the growth of this channel at no additional cost to you. If you don't use Webflow and you have any questions, I'll be living in the comments and happy to respond. So the best web development tool is only as good as the designs that you give it. Experienced freelancers and web developers know that you should never design as you develop. The web design phase should be entirely separate from the web development phase. And just like how there's a great tool for web development, development, there's a great tool for web design. This is why I use Sketch. Now before I go any further, just know that Sketch is exclusive to the Mac, so if you want a tool very similar to that, I'm going to recommend three in this category, that's Adobe XD, Figma, or Sketch. All three of these are basically the same, and at some point along my web dev journey, I've tried all of them, so I could speak for all of them. Out of the three, I like Sketch the most, but that's why there's different flavors of ice cream. I hear people rave about Figma to each their own. If you've never heard of design tools such as these, they basically give you an open canvas similar to Photoshop, but it's more focused in on UI, UX, web design, maybe even logos and social media posts. It really is almost as if they took Photoshop and only put in the tools that were important for UI and UX designers. It really gives the designer everything they need.
So I figured for this section, instead of showing you demos of the actual software, I would just run through their websites and run through their pricing because, like I said, there's three tools you could use. There's Sketch, there's Adobe XD, or there's Figma. There's, of course, others out there, but these are really the, the three best ones. So this is Sketch. You can see this is kind of what it looks like in here. You can design whatever you want. Um, you could build it out for apps. This is a, it's a pretty strong focus on app UI design, but of course you could build website stuff in here as well. You could see it's trusted by Facebook, Google, blah, 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 all that stuff you see. This is the app icon. Wow, it's really beautiful, huh? Um, so yeah, you could, you could add collaboration like I was showing you. You could have multiple people in there and you could share the document if you want. You could prototype, which is great. Um, you could do that for all of these as well. Pretty much all of these features you could do. So I'm really just going to show you the UI and things like that. So this is basically it. You get you get a lot of really design centric tools. They're constantly updating Sketch, and there's all sorts of free plugins, paid plugins, and things like that that you could use. So let's take a look at pricing. So it starts standard, you could get it $9 per editor per month, but you could start free, or it's $99 per year um, per editor paid yearly. Plans change every time I go on here because this was not what I paid for it. I don't even remember what I paid for it, but it looks like they're going a different way. Um, so yeah, this is just a Mac tool, but it's a really great one. So let's let's move over to Adobe XD. But before I do, I'm just realizing the first 30 days are free with no credit card. So if you want to give it a shot and you have a Mac, go to sketch.com. You can check it out. I'll have the link in the description as well. Um, let's go over to Adobe XD. You're getting the same thing here. Just this is it works with Windows or it works with Mac. Um, you could get a free trial. Um, looks similar. You could get the same stuff. This one is probably maybe a little bit more focused on web UI. Um, and I'm not just thinking that because the first thing I saw was on um was showcasing a website i'm thinking it because i've done this i've used xd with my old company forever so I, I get how this tool works it is really great for web ui but it's also really great for um everything really and there's a lot that you can do with it but it's the same sort of stuff you have your collaboration tools blah 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 i'm not going to waste too much time you get the idea adobe xd starts at 9.99 per month you could get a free trial with it i'm pretty sure you have to put a credit card down or you could get it with creative cloud of course which gives you access to everything I like Creative Cloud a little bit. I don't love it. I don't have it anymore. Um, I would say this is the weakest one, just a personal opinion, but there are people that swear by XD, that swear by Adobe products. Some Adobe products are great. It's not my favorite out of all three of them. I used it for probably the longest out of all three of these. Um, Sketch is my personal favorite, like I said. But then there's Figma. This is like the lost brother for me because I've never really used it extensively. I've used it. I've tried it. I liked it. I didn't love it. It just, it was. But Figma is free. You can use it free. I don't know the full extent of it, but I know compared to the others that it's a little more easy to use free. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, it's still web-based. Unless they did come out with an app. It's been a little while since I've used it. But again, just like the others, you get the same sort of stuff. Heavy collaboration. You get color assets, which is really great. I remember hearing something about that. I'm not a Figma expert. There are experts out there. Um, this is cool. I guess you could brainstorm now. I didn't even know you could do that. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot that you could do in Figma. It's pretty much the same as the others. Um, this one starts free. Let me see what the pricing looks like, though, if there is pricing anymore. This is how little I know about it. Of course there's pricing. What am I saying? There's pricing on everything. So Figma for design and prototyping starts free forever. It's for three Figma and FigJam files. That's what it is. So it is free, but you can only use like three. Okay, that makes sense. It's pretty good. Um, Figma Professional, that's $12 per editor per month or um, build annually or $15 month to month. So then you get unlimited, all that stuff. And then 45 per editor for a Figma organization. I, don't, I feel like most of us aren't going to use that who's watching. Maybe you will. Maybe you will. I don't know. But I'm, I'm not using that. 
So, uh, Fig Jam. I don't really know what Fig Jam is. There's some people out there that would know a lot more than I do. Um, but yeah, this is this is Figma. This is Adobe XD, and this is Sketch. And I apologize, I don't know too, too much about Figma. It's been a long time since I'm using it, so much so that this UI that I'm seeing on screen is not what I remember Figma looking like. Um, Again, when you use one of these tools, you don't need to use all of them. That's why this one takes my heart, it's because I use it. Um, but Figma's great, I'm sure. And I've heard it integrates pretty well, or people really like it with Webflow. Just from what I heard, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, this one is at least the most forgiving for beginners because it's free. So I would probably recommend this one honestly over the others just because of that. But again, it's different flavors of ice cream for a reason. So yeah, now back to the video. Most of these tools, Adobe XD, Sketch, Figma, have really robust collaboration tools built into them. This makes it easy to work on a project with your team or showcase your designs to your client. But let's just say you are using a tool that doesn't showcase like this, there is an awesome free tool on the internet called markup.io that does. So this next tool is one of the best free tools that can truly amplify your workflow. And I pretty much already told you about it. It's called markup.io. Now this is a quick one because its only purpose is to showcase a PDF of your web design copy so that your client can see it and make markups directly on the design. All right, so we are here with markup.io. This one should only take a second because its only job is to give markup tools for your clients for a website or any PDF that you want. This is a really awesome, very easy and free tool. So let's go to my old, my clients, not old clients, my client, uh, her site, LSM Home Solution dot com. Um, we're going to let this load in. All I did before we even get to this, all I did was click upload on that last dashboard page to upload this PDF and I added her as a viewer. So right now you'll see, which is great about this tool. We had blue as the initial button color. It was an ugly blue. I'm so glad we didn't go with it. But um, you see all these little numbers in there, right? So one of the comments that she made, because all you have to do is click this, you just click and you could add a comment, which is amazing. Anyway, she added number four over here, would like to change the color, maybe Kelly green. So we tried Kelly green and it looked terrible. <laughs> so then we decided on black eventually because we just thought it looked better in a luxury setting. Anyway, so you could see all this tool does is give you access to mark up items of a design. So, you know, we have in total 25 items here that ended up becoming the final version. So like, look, here's an example from this. I built this in sketch. I built this whole design in sketch. Then I brought it to markup.io. It started in blue. So it started here. I ended up working through, I resolved 20 of her action items. A couple of them were left open because they just didn't work the way they should work. So we ended up finalizing down to basically this. And now I'm going to type in her website and you can see how it turned out. So this is collaboration at its finest. It started with her design or our design in sketch. We brought it to markup.io. And then we brought it into, and sorry, that was very loud. We brought it into um, the actual design. And you can see the picture's a little messed up at this angle. So it varies depending on where you're at. Um, so we'll, we'll leave it here just to show. And yeah, we kept everything really, really the same um, from that last design, which is great. So this is basically it. We got to fix our access token, but that's that's a topic for another day as well. Um, so, so yeah, that's markup.io and that's the beauty it brings. It helps get through the design stage and transition into the development stage. It helps fix your design process. It is just all around a great tool. Can't rec it enough, recommend it enough, recommend it enough. I don't know what I just said, but anyways, it is an awesome tool. I can't recommend it enough and back 
to the video. This thing has saved my life so many times when working with clients. It makes for such a streamlined approach to collaboration with your client that I can't stress enough how important this tool is. Now, if you already have something similar to this with one of the design tools that I mentioned previously, like Sketch, Figma, or XD, you don't really have to worry about this. But if that doesn't come with one of those, Markup.io is there for you. And there's not much more to say about it. All it is, is a wonderful markup collaboration tool. Okay, so coming in at number two, we have Active Campaign, which is the ultimate one-stop shop for CRM, email marketing, and automation. So what is it? Primarily, it's a customer relationship manager, more formally known as a CRM tool. It allows me to track my clients and the deals that I have with them. If you're new to CRMs, they're basically a supercharged contact list. But honestly, the CRM isn't the main reason that I use Active Campaign. I mainly use it for the automations and the email marketing suite. While the email composing tool itself is not my personal favorite among the various email marketing tools that I've tried, the overall package with Active Campaign makes it a no brainer. So here we are at the dashboard of Active Campaign, and you can see it's a little different than some of the things we previously looked at. You have a dashboard showing your contacts, contact trends, campaigns, automations, news if you need it, top contacts, which I need to block off, um, and pipelines, things like that. So let's go over to campaigns, and let's start building out just an email template really quickly. Let's go over to create a campaign. Let's name this test. And you see down here we have options, standard, automated, autoresponder, split testing, RSS triggered, and database. So you can set it up whenever a blog is triggered, it'll, it'll create an email. You could have automated ones, responders, things like that. So let's go over to next. And then let's send this to the master contact list. That's only 30, uh, 36 contacts. And now this is the editor, so here's where you go to compose your email. Um, we have a ton of templates that they have. I'm not going to waste too much time here. So let's just, I don't know, let's just pick this one. I have from name is client onboarding, from email hello at Synergy, replies to my email. And then let's do, this is a test. I'm going to click continue and then once I click continue it's going to take me to the actual composer here um, so you see this is a pretty nice template as it is and on the right hand side we have some additional items like a text block we could just drag right in here and I don't know where it went there it is if I want to change the font color to white I don't know why they didn't previously and that didn't work but there we go so I'm gonna write hello I could center it Let's make it 32 and then obviously you could come in here change the font to whatever you'd like blah 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 you you know the deal there's a lot of customization within that you could personalize it so you could have like hello comma full name something like that or how whatever else you really have so I'm going to show you some of the other blocks really quickly there is let's close that out there's text block image block a button block which is really nice you could also customize this however you want you could change the padding the borders let's make it 50 all around so you get a circle there um, yeah you could change this however you want you notice how this background is white but everything else is black well down here you could go and add a background so there we have one but there's a border let's get rid of the border how do I get rid of the border? Why is it like that? Ah, okay. Well, for some reason, there's a border there. I don't really care. I'm not going to waste too much time trying to fix it, but you get the idea. So let's get out of here. You also have a video that you could add, line breaks, spacers, RSS feed, social links, or an HTML block if you are so adventurous. Um, this one says built with active campaign. Obviously, I'm going to get rid of that. Why would I keep that when I'm sending an email? Um, then we could go in. Let's just say we add a, add a logo. Let's bring this down. Synergy. And then from there, you can customize however you want. When you're ready, you just click next. 
Once it's done loading, it's going to take me to a page with the summary, and then I could choose to send it or schedule it, which is really nice. Um, but for now, I'm going to save and exit this. And next, we're going to look at automations, um, because with the automations, you could do a whole array of things. I'm just going to show you some basics of what you could do, because this is a vast, vast world here. Let's see. If someone contacted us on my website... Um, we have a basic workflow where, because we use Typeform, which we're going to get to, um, you click start a project, the form is received, immediately they subscribe to the master list, which is for my Synergy contacts, an email will go out to them saying thank you for contacting us, um, we, we received your request, we're working to fulfill, etc. Then I will get a notification both via text and simultaneously through the app itself. I'll get a push notification and then I could go ahead and work on it um, I haven't delved too deep into this because I am still relatively new to active campaign but you could get really crazy deep let's take a look let's just add something you can see some sending options is to send an email send a text a notification email um, let's see send a site message or a one-on-one -on -one email but those are when you have more of an expensive plan there's if and else statements go do statements Goals, start an animation, end this animation, and another automation. Um, Webhooks, perform math or splitting. You could do a stuff with your contacts like adding tags, subscribing, updating a contract, uh, removing a tag, adding a note, add to Facebook custom audience, um, uh, adjust a contact score, and then the CRM, which we're going to get to, but I don't really want to show much because I have personal details in there. Um, but you could do a lot of stuff with the CRM, like adding a new deal, updating a title, updating status, etc. You could do a, a lot in here. So if CRMs are important to you and having a deal pipeline is important to you, you could set up automations that when the customer does X, it triggers Y in the automation suite and in the deal pipeline. It's fantastic. If you have Salesforce, you're a little bit more advanced you could do a lot more like create a contact in salesforce create a lead and then there's some other apps that integrate well with active campaign there's a ton of apps that integrate but you can see there's a lot in here to choose from by default and of course you could just add a webhook as well so you could post whatever you want one of my favorite things that i actually use frequently is posting a message in slack so when let's say they inquire on the website another automation i have that i haven't shown in this one is whenever i get an inquiry on the site i get a slack notification so that way i could see it as well there it's really great i could read everything very crystal clear so that's kind of it for automations there's a ton a ton of stuff in here it really is amazing I can't really show my deals because there's a lot of personal information on my clients in there, but it's a Kanban board, essentially, that shows you your deal, the deal value, the contact in it, where you're at. You could add notes for the client, stuff like that. So for a basic rundown of it, and now, of course, you can see all my contacts, so I'm going to be blocking this out, but I'm going to go up here to add a contact. And then you could see in add a contact, we could add a first name. Let's do my name. Let's do a test email. And let's create a new account. Synergy is the new account. So that way you'll see what I mean by new account. All right, so now that I found an email to use, you could see once I'm done adding the basic information, I could do something like add it to a list. So let's add it to potential new hires just for an example. I could add a deal, so which is really cool. Let's say I'm building a website for myself, jerrybellino.com. Um, I could create a deal value for it. Let's just say it's $9,000 because I wish I had a client that was that much right now. Um, I could add it to a pipeline like current clients, hiring sales reps, hiring web developers, or the sales pipeline, which I don't use. I really only use these three because current clients is kind of my sales pipeline. Um, so then you could add uh, the stages that I pre-built were discovery and contract, design phase, develop phase, final presentation, and then completed. 
So we're in the discovery and contract phase here. Deal owner is me. I could add an automation if I want, if I have one ready to go. I could add tags for the client if I want these come in really, really handy use cases for your email marketing and for automations later. Um, but let's just go in and click apply. So now this is my contact. You can see here's my name, here's my um, here's my email, um, and you can see I have some generic info and you could add custom fields, which is amazing. So I have my name, I could add my phone number, job title, preferred method of communication, which let's just say I like text messaging. Um, I built that field, I think it's really great to have. Down here you could see we have tasks, notes, emails and conversations which is really great um, so you could add notes emails when you add your email to active campaign it will automatically show all the emails and conversations that you had with a client it's truly fascinating how this works I don't know if I could show you deals because of the personal information that I that I said but you could do other things like come over to accounts and then in the accounts you could see the names of web projects that I've worked on. So like, for instance, let's click into Synergy again, where we're at. And it's similar of a contact, but here is where we get really deep. I enter all of my client discovery information in here. So because this is this is the business, this is what they're building. So you see, I have a ton of stuff, Gen general details. I have a ton of questions, all your generals. Um, then business details, we have annual revenue, industry, number of employees, how do you see this project, a starter apartment, two, three year home or a 10 year mortgage. Um, down here we have, does the client sell physical items? Um, you have like all your website information. Do they, why do they want a site? What is the success? Then you have your marketing um, objectives and things like that. Oh, and by the way, because I just added my contact, I just got a message. You received a new application on Synergy Digital. Check your inbox. Really cool that I got that on my phone. Um, but then some functionality stuff over here. So the reason this is so important is it gives me everything I need. It is my toolbox for when I have a client I see all their information in here. I know exactly what they want. I know exactly where I am in the deal process. Um, and I know how much the deal's worth, our conversations. Everything is tracked through Active Campaign, and it is all for a very affordable price. Another cool thing about Active Campaign is how its automations work and how well it integrates with other tools throughout the world. Active Campaign is by far the most integrative email marketing and CRM tool on the market right now, and it allows you to run some pretty advanced automations which come in handy when you're running a business. Active Campaign starts at $9 per month if billed annually or $15 per month if you decide to pay month to month. This one will give you access to 500 contacts, but the pricing can be tailored specifically to your needs and it fluctuates greatly. Similar to Webflow, there is a sign up link for Active Campaign in the description of this video. Up next, we have my absolute favorite tool on this list, Jasper. So what's a Jasper? Basically, it is a lifesaver. It's an AI powered writing software tool that literally writes blogs, papers, marketing content, ad content, anything you need. You just give it a little prompt and it's spits it out for you. And may I add, the output that it gives is plagiarism free and it's entirely unique. I guess plagiarism and uniqueness is kind of the same thing, but whatever. The cool thing about Jasper is it scanned most of the internet to gain its knowledge. I wish I was lying because I know this sounds too good to be true, but it really is that good. This is one of those tools where it makes me happy to be alive in this time, and it also makes me feel so thankful for the technology we have. So let me give you a quick demo. All right, guys, I am so excited to show you this next tool, and this is Jasper.ai. It's gone through many name changes over the years. It started as Conversion.ai, then it was Jarvis.ai, and now it's Jasper.ai. So this tool is really great, and you see we're in the Templates tab over here. There's a lot to choose from. If you, we're gonna demo Longform Assistant, but over here you see there's Frameworks as well, which show you marketing frameworks, things like that. Email templates, website templates, um, which is great for us designers. There's blog templates, ad templates, e-commerce templates, social media. There's a new tab for any new things, Google, video, and SEO. So I'm going to go over to Longform Assistant. 
and then over here you'll see there are two options you could start from scratch and you could do a blog post workflow let's do a start from scratch and I think we're gonna write about why Jarvis is the best tool on the internet so you have to give it a title then you have to give it a description a brief something basic that you're going to prompt so that the AI can do its job scan the internet and hopefully not have any plagiarism now I have found it's not perfect every time but what is great about this is it takes out almost all the work you have to do so if there is some plagiarism moments in there you could go back and you could edit that so let's let's I'll show you what I mean let's uh, say there are many tools on the internet but Jasper offers a truly unique product by saving me hours writing blogs papers marketing content and more um, and then what's cool is down here you could have tone of voice um, and you could have tone of voice could be witty serious Joe Rogan and there's some others in there so I'm gonna do let's do Joe Rogan there we go um, let's add some keywords in there let's add Jasper let's add AI writing tool and let's add Jarvis.ai just because that's the old name so then you have um, select language, we're going to do English, then you have um, output length, which is small, medium, or large, we're going to do large, and then all I got to do, this is where it gets crazy, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to use my hands, which you could obviously tell, I'm going to click compose down here, or command J, and boom, watch what it does, there we go, it's just writing away. <laughs> Think about how amazing that is that we could have a tool that just does that. And look, if I go in and click Command J again, it's just going to keep writing. So now I'm going to read this to you to show you how cohesive it is for AI. There are many tools on the internet that can help you with your writing, but Jasper is truly unique. With Jasper, you could save hours writing blogs, papers, marketing content, and more. Jarvis is an AI, which see, there's where it gets a little flawed, is it should be Jasper, and it should know that, but you could obviously just go in and change it. Jarvis is an AI writing tool that can help you get your ideas down on paper quickly and efficiently. With Jarvis, you don't have to worry about grammar or spelling errors as the AI will take care of those for you. Even though it just kind of didn't because it's calling itself Jarvis, even though it is Jasper now, whatever. You can also use Jasper to brainstorm ideas as it will provide you with a list of related topics to choose from. Overall, Jasper is the best tool on the internet for anyone who needs help with their writing. Thanks to Jasper, I've been able to save hours on my work and get my ideas down quickly and efficiently. If you're looking for a writing tool that can help you get your work done faster and more efficiently, Jasper is the best option out there. Thanks, Jasper. Think about how amazing that is for only two little things that we have to change. We just got to change the name, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, you have a cohesive path right here. You have more than what you need to write a blog. Um, obviously, I didn't give it a really good enough prompt to write a full long thing, but if I wanted, I could click Command J indefinitely and keep going. Anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this text and I'm going to copy it into a plagiarism checker. So there we go. I just copied it in and I'm going to paste it in this plagiarism checker here and let's go to check plagiarism, see what we could find. So it's checking and let's see what we got gonna load for a minute but you can see this is the exact output we have there are many tools on the internet that could help you with your writing but Jasper is truly unique um, like I mentioned so here we go look at least this one says it's a hundred percent unique content which is really awesome to see so yeah, again, this isn't always the case, and of course, maybe if I took this content and put it in somewhere else, it's going to tell me a different thing. It's really hard to tell what is plagiarism and what is not with these checkers. Some of them will say it is, so you buy the plan, etc. Um, so... This one's saying it's 100%. We'll see. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I just think it's really fascinating that this exists. And even if there was a little bit of plagiarism in there, guess what? You could just go back in and edit. It's just like a Google Doc. So I could go in and format. I could go in and say, why I love Jasper. And then in there, I could just make it H1, make it bold, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you in here, I was working on a paper or a, I think it was a script um, 
for how Jasper could help me. I didn't get too, too far in it, but I got a lot in there. And what's really cool is there's recipes. So I'm going to show those to you in a second as well. But you see, I had a lot of this video script down. I haven't posted it yet, but it's about Jasper. Let's go over to recipes because you could do some cool stuff in here. They give you the recipes to create blog posts, idea factories, Facebook ads, etc. We're not going to do all of these, but each one does have a really fine tailored um you know template for it let's just do one more let's try something let's try something crazy in here let's see what we got so let's see what can we do what can we do why don't we go with a google ad headline just for the sake of it. You can see in here the prompt is very different. So let's say the project name is Synergy Digital. And let's do a description. Synergy Digital is a remote digital agency that builds websites for clients throughout the United States. Let's do friendly tone of voice. And maybe let's see. Let's try to train it, right? We build beautiful websites. And let's see, language options, it's English. We're going to keep it there. You could change the outputs. There's three by default. I'm going to add five. Let's click generate AI content and let's see what it comes up with. Maybe I'll like them, maybe I won't, but at least it helps me. Beautiful websites from Synergy Digital is great. We build beautiful websites alone is great. We build websites for clients nationwide. These are all great ad headlines in here. So other than this one, which I don't really like, and that's fine because that's why you could put as many outputs as you want. Um, I like some of these. I think some of these are really good. And again, what's really cool about Jasper in particular is it's constantly learning more from the internet. It's constantly reading the internet and trying to learn new things. So it's always going to get better. Um, Again, this is one of those things, if you use it right and really put your time into trying to give it the right prompt, you don't have to spend time writing, you just really spend time giving it the right information, which is a lot less of the time than it would be for you to sit there and write a blog for however long. So this is Jasper. It is still growing and it is really catching a lot of fire. I think it is a fantastic tool. And yeah, now back to the video. This tool is literally a godsend and I cannot talk highly enough about it. At the time of filming this, there are only two paid options, but I just heard in a briefing that they are planning on releasing a free version of Jasper. Honestly though, the prices of this tool make it worth every penny if you need it for its use case. So it starts at $29 per month for the starter package or $24 per month if billed annually. But the best option, the one with the long form assistant that I just showed you, that starts at $59 per month or $49 per month if if you pay for it annually. If you frequently write blogs or develop web copy, this tool seriously pays for itself. And I was actually just thinking about this the other day. You could easily list blog services on Fiverr and just use Jasper to output. Think about how amazing of a little side gig that could be. So Jasper was kind enough to hook you guys up with a special free trial that I have access to in the description. With this link, you'll get a special offer of 10,000 free words to use for whatever you want, just to give it a try. You're not going to find this offer anywhere else, so I'd recommend taking advantage of it just to play around with it and see what you could come up with. I've said it a million times at this point, but I can't stress enough how much I love this tool. So there you have it. These are the tools that I use every day as a no-code web developer. There are definitely some others in there, but this video is already long enough as it is, so I'm going to save them for another video. But if you found any sort of value from this, I'd really appreciate you dropping a like on this video and hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all things web design, entrepreneurial and creativity. So that just about wraps it up, but I am curious, what is your favorite no-code tool? Let me know down in the comments. So until the next one, stay hungry, stay foolish, and thanks for watching.